Hey, welcome back. Um, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the concept of rewilding. Um, rewilding is really, really important to um, our planet right now our, um, and to our own mental health. Um, if you've been following the theme of this station, uh, the concept of rewilding comes from the idea that our Earth has kind of suffered a lot of um, setbacks in terms of wild spaces. Um, and in these setbacks, uh, there's a lot of belief that it's our responsibility to try and bring them back. Um, a lot of the loss of natural ecosystems and loss of you know public parklands and uh, resources has come directly from human activity, in fact most of it, and as much as we might not realize it or maybe we're starting to, these places are running out. Um, we lose lots and lots of forests every year. We lose lots of access to public spaces. Um, some of you who maybe are lower income or don't live in rural areas might have noticed that during COVID, um, people had a much harder time getting um, getting out. You know, if public parks are shut down, all of a sudden access to green spaces became something that could only be there for um, the wealthy or those you know who had cars who could leave the city. Um, and I think that's really detrimental to our health. There's a lot of research out there that shows, you know, connection to wild spaces and spending time in nature is really healthy for us. So when we have a pandemic that necessitates us keeping distance for our own health, um, it's amazing to me that, you know, we, we start to realize like, wow, we've set up our society where we don't have access anymore um, as a collective. Maybe there's only access for a few, um, for those who can afford it. And I think that's really um, a human rights issue that we should think about. And beyond that, um, it's also an environmental rights issue where, you know, if we think that we don't have space um, in nature, what about other people? You know, what about, um, not sorry, not other people, but what about other animals and other um, living beings? So often human nature kind of only takes ourselves into account. And, you know, we might think it sounds a little bit fluffy to, you know, care about other living things. But if we don't, um, it impacts us. It impacts the entire supply chain. So um, not to be a little bit gloom and doom, but if we don't take care of our ecosystems, if we don't address climate change, we will start to have collapses to our food systems um, and to resources that we absolutely need to survive. Um, so on the fluffy side of it, you know, like, oh, I, I'm not like a tree hugger or whatever, that's, you know, fine by me if um, you're not feeling that empathy, but um, it, it affects human beings too when our ecosystems collapse and when we don't have access to them. Um, there are some uh, activists like myself, um, I think the gentleman who wrote Ecotopia, I'm spacing on his name, but I'll link to the book in this video, um, we recognize that um, we actually need to rewild like 50% of the earth is like one estimate that um, some people have suggested. So currently on the earth, um, there's very few places that are untouched by humanity. And um, there's an interesting documentary actually about the Chernobyl, um, the Chernobyl spill in um, the USSR and how when that happened, when everyone left um, Pripyat, that city, um, that district, the wildlife that returned was phenomenal. And it was really bittersweet, you know, that here's this wildlife returning that, you know, they're suffering radiation, they don't know any better, they don't know that Pripyat is toxic, and yet um, they found all of these native um, endangered species recovering because of the lack of human uh, intervention and the lack of human activity in these spaces. So there are a lot of animals that just simply will not survive if they have to share a habitat with us. They'll leave and, um, you know, we've just lost so many habitats from human um, environmental changes. And when we lose these, we lose these forever. And it affects our mental health, it affects our physical health, um, and it affects the the usefulness of like our genetic data banks in the future that we're running out of biodiversity and with that we're running out of a lot of data um, that could help us to you know cure diseases or create um, 
you know, create a more verdant earth, create systems of food that produce more and things of that nature or medicine. Um, so there's just so many different options for us in transitioning our world to a more sustainable place, um, a place that uses um, green fuels, a place that is zero waste, um, a place that doesn't have any like plastic that is like polluting our environments. But we can't do that um, if we don't take care of the natural resources that we have. Um, and when a species goes extinct, it goes extinct forever. We lose um, all of this you know, exponential data and exponential wealth of knowledge from nature that um, is lost forever with that species. So um, I just kind of wanted to leave you with these concepts today of rewilding and why it is so, so important. Um, I don't think that we're really going to make it as a species um, in a thriving way if we don't actively rewild. Uh, we've just lost too much um, in our environments and our ecosystems and we absolutely need to make this shift in order to um, change our world and make it a better place. Um, so anyway, not to get too preachy, um, you know, a part of the station is also just kind of like working on our mental health with regards to reconnection to nature. So, um, you know, aside from just stressing how important it is, I have a challenge for you today. Um, I would love it if you did a little bit of research on your local ecosystem and leave a note in the comments. Let me know um, where, where you live and have you learned anything today? Just doing a quick Google search. Are there native species where you live that you could work towards saving or raising awareness about? Um, and if you are lucky enough to own land or to have access to land, um, think about a small project that you could do this week to get out there and do a little bit to make a big difference. I think if we all do a little bit, um, not only does it start to ripple that effect of change, but it teaches our brains that um, it, there is hope, that it's not overwhelming, and that um, these small steps toward a more livable future are possible for us. Uh, it's a practice and we have to do it every day. So get out there, um, do something small, and let me know in the comments what you decided to do and what you learned about your local environment. Um, I'll go first uh, while I'm assigning it. In my local environment, uh, we have half um, half indigenous trees. Uh, these are koa and ohia. And then we have um, a bed of non-native um, grasses. And what happens in these forests for us is um, when this bed of grass covers the ground floor, it prevents the older trees sometimes from seeding their keiki, their babies. Um, and so what I'll do today after is I might pull up some weeds around a few sprouted koa trees um, that I saw nearby. And if all of us do that for um, older native canopy forests, um, we can allow them to have second generations of life um, and not lose those species. So thank you for checking this out and let me know in the comments what small thing um, you learned or decided to work on this week. And um, it doesn't have to be related to what mine was, maybe it's different. Maybe yours was recycling or um, learning about an urban situation in an urban area. So thanks so much for tuning in um, and have a great day. Aloha.